All right, welcome back. 12 minutes, 34 seconds of your life you're never going to get back. Regardless, here we go. Uh, the rudder horn install really should have been put on this video. But I didn't, so if you want to see how I did that, uh, maybe go back to the last little bit of uh, Tailcone 2 install. Um, but anyways, uh, that's now on most of the side skin is installed. You can see by the presence of not really having any Clecos left over. I did find that I needed to kind of clamp down the side skin to the furthest aft rib to get it to install right. Uh, here I'm just wiring up the plumbing to the Safe Air 1 uh, pedostatic install from Cleveland Tools. Again, I can't say enough about it. I love it. It's so much better than uh, what was supplied with the kit. Nothing that there's necessarily wrong with it. I just like the durability of it, I guess. Um, I guess now I'm installing, oh, I'm installing nut plates around the inspection holes there. A uh, pretty simple thing to do, not too particularly tough. The rivets at the bottom of that really thick tail cone skin really were tough for me. Uh, and it was mostly because I was trying to do it as a one-man job when really it probably should have been a two-man job. I had to use oops rivets and upsize some of those. Anyways, that's uh, that pretty much ends the side skin install right about here. And then we'll move into the top skins. Uh, some of the top skin, I left some of the preparation in there. Um, I know that everybody has seen uh, dimpling and scuffing and whatnot, but uh, for whatever reason, I decided to leave most of that in for the top skins coming up. The plate itself, um, this I've, for the inspection holes, I found. Um, that it was just easier to go to the end of section, I believe it is 10 that I'm on, and go on ahead and dimple them. Uh, and I'm doing the optional install, which is um, you're using essentially, uh, you're, you're dimpling the holes so that you can use countersunk screws. So it's a much more flush install. I think it's worth it, even though I had to go out on aircraft spruce and buy some countersunk screws and whatnot. I guess for the most part now, just tidying up the end. Oh, here's the cable install, which I will try to link the video to that on. As most people found out, the the plastic housing for the cable install when you get them in the package is not on the correct side, so it leads you down a path of installing it completely wrong. You can see the cables are now installed there as I'm putting the aft deck on. And uh, I used countersunk screws for the cable install, and I like it a whole lot. Um, right there I'm explaining to my in-laws essentially what I was trying to do and a few issues that I was running into and my father-in-law had a really great idea of how to to make three different surfaces line up 
correctly which seems to be the running theme of pretty much everything in the uh, aft end of the tail cone it's not I wouldn't call it particularly hard it's just you have to kind of sit there and think about how everything needs to line up and why is it not lining up and kind of moving parts around and moving Clecos around until it does actually line up my in-laws were here for I think it was about two weeks so you'll probably see them back and forth in the background God bless them they love to do lawn work and we have plenty of that and I love for them to love to do lawn work because it's not something that I particularly enjoy lots of trees on the property so they help with that immensely and in fact in that last little bit there I was he was uh, helping me buck a few rivets that the squeezer couldn't get to on the aft deck I would say 90% of those rivets on the aft deck the squeezer can pretty easily get to and then as you saw there's two rivets on either side of that last uh, 180 degree rib that a squeezer just will not get to um, there I'm taping the ELT wire this is the point where you put the rudder on drill a couple of holes and then take it right back off and you have to be you can see my father-in-law he just held up a 90 degree angle so that we drilled the holes absolutely to a 90 degree of the web in the aft rib uh, somebody on Facebook had uh, been slightly misaligned and drilled a new hole that they didn't intend to and while it's not completely damaged it's quite a lengthy repair there uh, next I'm gonna guess two to three minutes my buddy Addison comes over he was quite interested in how one goes about building an airplane so I told him that I had pretty much everything involved lined up and ready to go so he came over and we built uh, the the skinny top piece which then gets back riveted and uh, he's about to bav back rivet pretty much the entire section here that's probably the easiest and most enjoyable form of riveting would be back riveting at least for me and so we get the center section complete after that oh I guess we didn't get the whole thing that's me finishing it up I guess and then after that they have you move on to the side skins I found with that last little rib there you really needed a the 12 inch long back riveter just to get past the the web and the spar whole bunch of deburring whole bunch of scuffing I probably should have just cut this out but for whatever reason I left it in I think mostly because that's easily 60 70 percent of the time is deburring scuffing priming and it just makes me feel better when I see it all done in 30 seconds. Um, so side skins are clicoed on. Here's uh, my buddy Mike and I. Mike and I go flying a lot together. So I feel like he is slightly invested. Anyways, God bless him because he comes over and rivets all day with me and uh, so we're getting most of this or actually we're gonna get pretty much the entire thing minus two or three rivets completely riveted up it was easily a six hour time frame here maybe an eight hour 
Um, lots of blankets, lots of pillows, lots of couch cushions, which my l- wife loved. She really loved to know that the couch cushions were getting metal shavings and whatnot all over them. Um, you'll also notice that I kind of have to stay out of the center section of the tail cone. Uh, it turns out putting the yaw bracket on, also the yaw bracket kind of has like a sort of hump to it, which I didn't want to bend per se. And so I had to kind of stay out of the center section, so I was either left or right of those pillows. Um, I still think that's a necessary evil because, man, I just can't imagine putting the yaw bracket on after the fact. Still seems like a colossal pain, and I'm if I if that means I gotta work around it from time to time and either put it between my legs or lay on either side of that tail cone, so be it. Seemed totally worth it. Uh, we're finally, we're just doing this center section here. You'll notice there's still a lot of blowing left on the side skins. We had a, uh, we decided to take a, uh, have everybody over, take a dive in the pool. And then after that, as you can see, we're all in our swimsuits pulling off the blueing. I like to call them blueing parties where you just rip off all the blueing and you can see it growing at the bottom there. Because when you ball those suckers up, they just kind of expand. Um, here I'm doing the last three rivets uh, at the top where the center spar meets that most forward rib that you can see. And that was that's particularly hard. That's a one-man job. It does not matter how you split it. That's a one-man job, and it is not easy. I highly suggest a little painter's tape over the dome head of the rivet, and uh, it made the rivet still look relatively new and clean. But man, that was tough. And then just a little bit of tidying up. That's it for the tail cone. We'll see everybody for the empanage, empanage attached section for the horizontal stabilizer and the vertical stabilizer. Take care.